Okay, so today we're going to learn how to solve quadratics by completing the square. Um, and we're first going to start off by solving just by using the square root property or using square roots. Um, and this is very similar to all the other ones you've done by solving by square root. So in order to do that here, um, you have to notice that this is a perfect square trinomial. So if you factor it, it's going to come out to x plus 3 times x plus 3, which becomes x plus 3 squared. And you can only do that because this is a perfect square trinomial. When it's factored, it be becomes this parentheses that is squared. It's the same one. So now because I have this parentheses squared, x plus 3 squared, I can get rid of this squared by doing the inverse operation, which is taking the square root. A big step at this point is remembering that plus or minus, because it should happen right here. When I take the square root of both sides, I got to have that plus or minus right here. And the square root of 36 is 6. And then when I subtract 3 to solve for x, I get x is equal to negative 3 plus 6, but also negative 3 minus 6. So this is going to become positive 3, and this one becomes negative 9. So those are my solutions. So for the second example, we're going to do the same thing. And if you notice here, this is a perfect square trinomial as well and I can factor that. It's going to factor into x minus 5 squared. What multiplies to be positive 25, that adds to be negative 10. So I get x minus 5 squared is equal to 27. And now I can take the square root. And I have x minus 5, but remember it's plus or minus square root of 27. And when I add the 5, I'm going to get x equals 5 plus or minus square root of 27. Now you do need to check to see if this can simplify. And I'll go over here and I'll do a birthday cake. 3 and 9, 3 and 3, 3 and 1. That's my candle. And so I have a pair of 3's that comes out. And I get x equals 5 plus or minus 3 square root of 1, 3 left on the inside. I cannot combine this 5 and 3 because the 3 is being multiplied to the radical. So just leave it like this. This is my final solution. So to complete a square for a quadratic expression of the form x squared plus bx, what you're going to need to do is add b over 2 squared. And you're looking for the c term, that constant term, to add to this x squared in x in order to make it a perfect square trinomial. That's what it means to complete the square is you're making it into a perfect square trinomial so that it can be factored into a binomial that is squared. In order to do that for this example, I'm going to try to find the constant to add to this to make this a perfect square trinomial. So I have c is going to equal b divided by 2 squared. Well, my b is negative 16 divided by 2. That's going to become negative 8 squared becomes positive 64. Now, this constant that you add to the end will always be a positive. Okay, so you can use this negative or not. Either way, when you square it, it's always going to come out to a positive. Um, so I have x squared minus 16 plus 64. And now this is a perfect square trinomial. If you factor it, what multiplies to be 64, that adds to be negative 16, is x minus 8 and negative 8 and negative 8, which becomes x minus 8 squared. Okay, so for this next example, um, I'm going to solve actually by completing the square. And I've started the steps over here. The first step is to put in the form x squared plus bx equals c. Notice that this is a 1 
x squared. Now in this case it's not going to make a difference, but later on it will. So what I need to do is add the 11 to both sides, so I have that constant on the left side, or I'm sorry, on the right side, and I have just the x squared and the x term on the left side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this b over 2 squared in order to complete this into a perfect square trinomial. So I have 10 divided by 2 squared becomes 5 squared, which is 25. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to add that to both sides. I'm going to add it here and add it here. So I get x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 36. And what I need to do now is factor the left side. And so when I factor the left side, that becomes x plus 5 is equal to, I'm sorry, x plus 5 times x plus 5, which is x plus 5 squared, is equal to 36. And now I can solve it. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. x plus 5 is equal to, don't forget the plus or minus, and then subtract 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, and I have positive 6 minus 5 is 1, and negative 6 minus 5 is negative 11. Notice that when I factor this, it's going to become x plus the b over 2, and that's going to be your parentheses, that's going to be squared. Um, now if the b is a negative, then this sign will be negative. If the b is a positive, then the sign is a positive. It's going to be much easier for some of the more difficult ones if you know this pattern and you see this pattern. Whatever this term b over 2 comes out to, that's what's going to go into the factored form. Okay, so here's one that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, I still need to get it in the right form, which is my x squared and x term on the left side. So I'm going to subtract this. 5x and subtract 5x here, and I need to move my constant to the right side. So I have 4x squared minus 8x equals negative 20. And now I can start with my steps. I first have to get it in that x squared plus bx form, so I'm going to divide by 4 and I need to do it to everything because I need to make this quadratic term a 1x squared. So that means that this is going to be two, minus 2x and this becomes minus 5. Now to find what I'm going to add to both sides, I got to add the b over 2 squared to both sides and this is going to be negative 2 divided by 2 becomes negative 1 squared which is positive 1. So I have x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to, need to add 1 to both sides, so it's equal to negative 4. And now I can factor this and it becomes x minus 1, whatever this b over 2 was, squared is equal to negative 4. And now I can take the square root of both sides. And I get x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus 2i. And when I add 1, I can't combine these, so we're just going to write it x equals positive 1 plus or minus 2i. And those are my solutions. Okay, so I got a couple more. Um, just to show you the different types that can come out of this. So for this one, again, I need to get it in the right form first, so I'm going to subtract 5, and then I have to get this to become a 1x squared, so I'm going to divide by 2. Now this one doesn't work out as, as smoothly as the last one because now I have fractions. And so I'm still going to do the same thing, b over 2 squared, um, so I have negative 7 divided by 2. So I have negative 7 over 2 divided by 2. 
squared, well, dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, which is 1 half. And when I multiply that, it becomes negative 7 over 4. I'm going to square it, and I square the numerator, square the denominator, and I get 49 over 16. So that's what I'm going to add to both sides, 49 over 16. And this becomes x squared minus 7 over 2, x plus 49 over 16 is equal to negative 5 over 2 plus 49 over 16. Now, I need to combine these together, so I'm going to get a common denominator, which is going to be 16. So I multiply the denominator by 8, I multiply the numerator by 8, and that becomes negative 40. So I have x squared minus 7 over 2x plus 49 over 16 is equal to, and this becomes positive 9 over 16. This is where knowing that pattern of how to factor it comes into play, because without that, you have fractions and it gets really complicated. But if you understand the, the pattern of it, that's what's going to happen. I have the x, and because this is a minus, it's going to be minus, and it's basically the square root of this c, or whatever this b over 2 term was, which is 7 over 4. And that's going to be squared. And so now, to solve it, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I'm going to come up here. x minus 7 over 4 is equal to plus or minus, and this becomes 3 over 4. When I add 7 over 4 to both sides, I have x equals... 3 over 4 plus 7 over 4, or x equals negative 3 over 4 plus 7 over 4. So this becomes 10 over 4, which will reduce, which will reduce to 5 over 2, and this becomes positive 4 over 4, which is 1. So these are my two solutions to that quadratic. So that last one is probably the hardest one because of the fractions and everything. Um, but you will, you do need to know how to do it if they come up. This will be my last one. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to subtract the 22. So I'm just going to start out with this from both sides. Um, and now I'm going to find that b divided by 2 squared. So that's going to be 8 over 2. When I square it, that's 4 squared, which is 16. So I'm going to add 16 and add 16. And what happens, I get x squared plus 8x plus 16 is equal to negative 6. And this can factor into x plus 4 squared, which is equal to negative 6 and now take the square root. The point of this one is for you to understand that it's not always going to be perfect radicals and there sometimes will be imaginary numbers. So plus or minus i times the square root of 6 and then when I subtract 4 I get x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus i times the square root of 6. And those are my solutions. Okay, so here are three you try problems. Um, I'm just going, you can't factor any of these right away like the first couple in the notes. So you do need to move the constant over first. And you can try these. This last one is one of the fraction ones. Okay, so give it a try. Um, and I will take some time and show you how to do all three of these in a little bit after the joke. So what do skeletons say before they eat? Bon appetit! <laughs> Get it? Bone? Bon appetit! Okay, so here are your answers. The first one, x equals 4 and 6. The second one, 3 plus or minus 4i. And remember that this is the same as 3 plus 4i and 3 minus 4i. That's why it is two solutions. And then the last one is negative 4 and 2 thirds. So I'll work them out for you if you want. If not, you're done. That's fine. Um, 
the first one I have to get the 24 to the other side and now I'm going to make this into that perfect square trinomial by adding b over 2 squared so it's going to be 10 divided by 2 squared which is 5 squared is 25 now in order to add it to this side so that it becomes a perfect square trinomial I also need to add it to the other side so I get x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equal to 1 and now I can go to factor this because it's a perfect square it's going to come into this binomial that's being squared when you factor it x minus 5 times x minus 5 which becomes x minus 5 squared and now I can solve. I can take the square root. x minus 5 is equal to, don't forget that, plus or minus 1. And add 5. And I get x is equal to the positive 1 plus 5. But also x is equal to the negative 1 plus 5. So that's going to become 6 and 4. I'll do the second one over here. And so I get x squared minus 6x is equal to negative 25. I already moved that constant over. So now I'm going to add the b over 2 squared. So that's negative 3 squared becomes positive 9. Remember, it's always going to be a positive that you're adding. So this becomes plus 9. I also need to add 9 here. So that becomes negative 16. So when I take the square, I'm sorry. So when I factor it, it's going to become x minus, and because it's just that b over 2 term, which is negative 3, and that becomes x minus 3 squared is equal to negative 16. Now because it's a binomial squared, I can take the square root, and I get x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus 4i and add the 3 and I get x is equal to positive 3 plus or minus 4i and so this last one I'm going to move the constant over the other side so I have 3x squared plus 10x is equal to positive 8 because I need to add 8 to both sides. And now i got to get rid of this coefficient on the quadratic term. So I get x squared plus 10 over 3x is equal to 8 thirds. And now I'm going to find that b over 2 squared. Now b divided by 2 is the same as doing b times one half and this is going to become 10 over 6 but that reduces to 5 over 3 so when I square 5 over 3 that's 25 over 9 and so I add 25 over 9 to both sides and this becomes x squared plus 10 over 3x plus 25 over 9 is equal to, and I need a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply both by 9, or I'm sorry, both by 3 to get the denominator to be 9. So that's 24 over 9 plus 25 over 9 becomes 49 over 9. So this left side is going to factor into x, and because the b term is a plus, it's plus, and it's just going to be 5 over 3. That pattern, there's a couple different ways you can look at it. Take the square root of this one, or you can do that b divided by 2 term here. That's what's going to be in this spot, is equal to 49 over 9. Take the square root of both sides, and I get x plus 5 over 3 is equal to 7 over 3 square root of 49 square root of 9 but remember I gotta have my plus or minus so then when I subtract 5 over 3 if you notice they are common denominators 
and I get x equals positive 7 thirds minus 5 over 3 and negative 7 thirds minus 5 over 3. So this becomes 2 over 3 and this one becomes negative 12 over 3 which reduces to negative 4. So I have x equals 2 thirds and negative 4.